Hello everyone and welcome to BMG Drive and today we're going to be checking out the awesome Taz Pack by Ryan Cookie that adds a number of variations of vehicles that we would know in the West as larders. Now I'm just going to quickly show off um, the differences between them and do a quick rundown on what the pack includes. So the first vehicle included in the pack is this, the Taz Mir. Um, and it is very much a representation of what would happen in the BUNG universe to create a larder. Now, this on the right in red is a uh, is an old version, the original variant. Um, basically, the equivalent of the uh, the Jiguli, the Fiat 124 original version of the uh, the larder, the Vaz platform um, and here on the left is the updated later version that would be sold well into the 2000s um, it has got a few minor changes to the styling composite headlamps and uh, bigger bumpers and a slightly different interior um, but under the skin pretty much the same vehicle from uh, all the way back in the 19 what 60s 70s these have a uh, some very old roots now this mod pack also comes with uh, export versions um, of both the old one and the new one which include a lot of very very cool details that we will be checking out um, but it doesn't just come with the versions of what I would know in the UK as the Reaver because if we go over here you can see this the Taz Baikal the uh, old version in green the modern version in red um, a variation based off the old Amir a 4x4 lifted platform vehicle that uh, <laughs> As you can see, it takes very strong inspiration from the real-life Lada Neva. Now again, this has export variants and modern variants, and we'll be checking them all out in today's video. But first, we're going to get started with having a look at the mirror. Now this model that I'm driving here to start off with is the bottom of the barrel base original model. Now as you can see it is very much based off the Miramar, it is evident to see in the lines despite having different lights and uh, you know a few different styling changes, but that's no, no bad thing, that's no laziness on the author's part. The real life original Jiguli as it was known was basically a, a pretty much carbon copy of the Fiat 124 beefed up for uh, for the Soviet for the Soviet roads and uh, this is a similar similar type of vehicle but it has enough different details that I am a really really big fan as you can see here it's got like different dashboard and interior elements no tachometer not worthy um, it is obviously left-hand drive which the original Miramar is not and it drives about how you would expect it to drive with 50 horsepower and uh, the finest Soviet engineering putting it together but let's let's dive into the variants and see because we will be here all day if I spend five minutes to look at each one. There is a lot to look at. Um, so as you can see, this is the original versions. So there are a couple beta ones here. This is the one that I'm driving now. And there is also a wagon variant, which is very cool and something that the base Miramar doesn't have. And as you can see, you know, everything opens, all of the doors. Well, I did not showcase previously but it all opens it all functions it's all up to a very high standard um, it inclu even includes interior elements such as a key you can turn if you would like your car to turn off and then never turn on again now a lot of the configs are pretty similar um, that's just you know just the way the, the, it would work in the Soviet Union when it comes to cars you know you didn't have a, a big options list you had maybe the choice of engines I, I don't even know to be honest even to me that sounds a little much um this is one of the 1.3 variants of the uh the later model as you can see it has different tail lights you know they're slightly bigger um plastic mirrors and plastic trim um bigger kind of safety bumpers i guess you would call them um I, i'm feeling very safe right now after that crash and uh, a different uh, kind of dashboard interior layout um it's still very much reminiscent of the original model um, there is not a, a lot that can be said for the uh, the adaptations that they did over the years, but again, that is not at all a criticism of the mod itself. I I would I'm very glad that they stayed authentic rather than trying to pretend as if you know there was this giant options book that you would get and uh, you're living in the Soviet Union where it come to get a car. Uh, no, you you asked for a car, and if you were very lucky, you got a car, and that was it. Really, you did. There was no. There was no choosy beggars in those days, you know? Let's go see how it holds up in a uh, front-end crash. 
yeah. As you, very evident, oh, I'm being pushed now. Very evident that uh, it has its roots in the days long before Euro N Cup safety tests. And it is quite funny and also somewhat worrying to uh, to think about how designs like this, in both in game and in real life, last all the way up to the 2000s, the 2010s. Ridiculous. Uh, it's no wonder the amount of these things you see on Russian Tashcam compilations. <laughs> Especially if it drives anything like this. It is a bit leery. I think it's got leaf springs at the back. It makes it a bit of a menace. Now, the one that we're checking out here um, was that version. You can honestly, to be to be brutally honest, if you are looking to see the differences, you can skip out a lot of these. They are basically just different engines. You didn't get much choice. Now, you can move up to stuff like the, uh, the late 1500, which has, you know, hubcaps and... Uh, Headlight wipers, actually. I, I didn't notice if the other ones did have headlight wipers. It makes sense with all the snow. Um, but here you get to see the very, very cool wagon design that happens in the later models. It, it, it looks how they do in real life. I absolutely love it. I am a really big fan. Uh, you know, this headlight design is cool. You can see it's got different lights. No fog lights. Um, but, you know, big indicator, big blocks. I, I love it. I'm a really big fan of how the creator has taken the real life designs of you know the 2105 and adapted it to both fit the Miramar versus the real life Fiat 124 and also to fit the Beam universe so it's not a complete you know carbon copy as close as we can get it all makes sense and I really like it and there go my tail lights <laughs> excuse me coming through <laughs> That did uh, did really not that much. I mean, it's not a particularly heavy vehicle, 1,100 kilos. That's why it manages to be this exciting, shall we say, with uh, only, what, less than 80 horsepower. Now, that's not meaning to say that there are absolutely no variants. Um, there's stuff like this, which is the uh, the deluxe model. Um, without meaning to be too stereotypical, I imagine this would be reserved for the likes of uh, party members, higher up, stuff like that. As you can see, it has uh, different bumpers, um, a chrome grill at the front and some more kind of trim accent pieces um, and a tan interior with a clock. I don't believe the original one had a clock. This is the height of luxury and a, and a tachometer I've just noticed. Um, now this comes in both... Ooh, it is a bit leery. I do find myself clipping stuff that I probably shouldn't be clipping, especially with this little power. Um, it does happen though. Uh, it's definitely not because of my poor driving. Um, but yeah, this is a, a cool variant. I enjoy it. I imagine stuff like this did exist, um, possibly for members of the KGB and stuff like that. Again, not not wishing to stereotype too much, but uh, it, it is about what I would expect, you know? But does it launch off a cliff effectively is my question. Yes. Yes, it does. And this is back where I crashed about a minute ago. Wow. Life truly is just one big circle. Now these are the deluxe versions. Um, it also says that it has, you see, interior wood. Um, how very fancy. There are also stuff like this, a turbo diesel one, um, which I would imagine would come as some sort of towing package. This seems to be a, uh, a late model uh, post-Soviet version, um, you know, which I, I guess makes sense, would give them access to more engines and stuff like that. Um, not particularly powerful, but it is more powerful than the than the other versions. Even it probably has a lot more torque, so it's actually quite sprightly, you know. Yeah, you know, I cannot complain. This thing is pretty quick. Does it have a it has a seventeen hundred badge? Excuse me, coming through, terrorising the streets of Italy in my mirror. Oh, clipping bits off everybody. Can I spin you? No, not quite enough weight to be a complete menace, but uh, I can definitely try. It also said it had heavy duty spent suspension. It does seem pretty heavy duty to me. Please climb up. Oh no, that's a bit tragic, isn't it? Oh well, guess we're going down the hill rather than up it. And into the riverbed. 
probably won't be found for, for decades at this point. Now, as you might have also seen in the configs menu, there is this, the flatbed version. Um, it comes with or without this kind of bed cap on the back, um, but this is very much reminiscent of the, the kind of stuff that you would see during these days and these periods. I know I've seen pictures of, you know, FSO Polonaise pickup trucks that are similar. I know that the uh, FPS Trapez mod that I may one day review for a video um, has a body style very similar to this. Can't quite make it up the hill, but as you can see, it kind of has a, a two-door cab um, with then a big bed um, in the back. This one, as I said, with the optional tray. I'm sure you could definitely fit some hay bales and stuff like that in it. And again, this is the kind of thing that I don't know if I would have thought about it if I was making the mod, but I'm very, very glad that the creator did and has included stuff like this. Got it. It doesn't have much weight over the rear wheels. I mean, it's still quite heavy, but I imagine that's probably, you know, it's heavier, but I imagine that's because of a beefed up frame and not because of the actual, uh, the actual box on the back, which means that the handling becomes even more leery. <laughs> the acceleration is so bad. I'm surprised this thing doesn't have the diesel. I would expect... I mean, again, I, I'm not no expert. I imagine the config are probably based off what you could get. Oh, come on. Oh, I didn't see, didn't see that tree. I imagine the configs are based off what you could get in real life, um, hence why. But you, it would make logical sense for the pickup truck version to have the diesel engine. Whoa! Okay... The cat can fall off. We have learnt that today. Um, as you would expect, the deformation on this mod is extremely good, both being based off a base game car, but also being modified to a high standard. Um, absolutely no complaints there. But personally, I think that this mod really starts getting interesting once you get to the export versions. Now, this is the base um, kind of old original export version. Um, I believe it's called the Zignet, um, which I'm sure is a, a play on, well, I'm not saying it's a play on the word Signet, it probably just means Signet, but there is probably some real life version um, that has a similar name. Um, but the export ones, I happen to know a little bit about these. Um, not necessarily these earlier ones, but definitely the later ones were actually sold in Canada, which makes them quite cool. I'm talking the export ones such as this, uh, this kind of late standard export one with the awesome side graphics. I love stuff like this. It's so tacky. And the uh, the tan interior with a tachometer, um, quite a bit quite a bit better equipped than you would get in your regular um, home version, I guess you could say. Oh, this is so cool. Also comes with the English badges saying Taz Zignet 1300. I know it's tacky, the modifications that this thing has, but I don't care. I love it. Um, I would 100% drive something like this in person. There's a guy who I follow on Instagram who has a an original La, like UK Lada Neva with a few, you know, it's got basket weave wheels and a few little fog lights and stuff and I, I think it is the coolest thing despite probably being a pretty terrible vehicle to actually live with um, I don't know something about the export models and stuff like this is just so neat I, I'm, I am a big fan of in general the trivia that comes with learning about vehicles sold in countries that you might not suspect or how they were sold in in other countries apart from their home country like did you know the Chevy Cavalier was sold in Japan as a Toyota. Did terribly. But I digress. Are we going to have a little crash up here? See how well this thing holds up, being a later one? In fact, the one I crashed before might have been a later one. It doesn't seem to matter. It crumples like a tin can. I mean, it, structurally, it holds up all right, but, you know, the forces imposed on the person driving would not be very good. Now, these export models also have stuff like this, um, which I think is somehow even one step better than the saloon version. Look at it. It is beige. It is wonderful and beige. It has two-tone. And it also has something that you would not expect, which is the reason why I just tried to shift up and could not. 
an automatic gearbox, the Tasmatic. This is so cool. I had a quick look at this. Like I've had this mod, I've had access to it on the uh, on the author's Patreon for a little while, um, which is still currently, as I'm recording this, in early access. Though uh, I believe it will soon be available on the Beam repo. Hence why I'm making this video now, um, because it is at basically a ready to or like a finished state. Um, so I've had a look at it, but I wanted to save checking out everything properly for this video. And I mean, look, it's, it has an automatic. It's an export automatic larder wagon. It's it's terrible. I love it. I love the little Zignut badges. There is all of the details of this vehicle I adore. I really, really love. I, yeah, I love it. I'm going to be completely frank, I am not unbiased at all when reviewing this mod because I love it so much. And this is the kind of thing that Beam has been missing for so long because, you know, it's especially when it comes to crashing vehicles, this is such a, a missed niche. I mean, I know there was the old Larder pack a few years ago, but I am talking law friendly wise. You know, we, we've not had something like this to fill the, uh, the niche of creating dash cam compilations where people drive like this. And it still drives. It still drives. It is pretty tough, you know. Not the safest, but it is a it's a tough brute. Now the export models. Now the export models, much like the uh, original Soviet one that we checked out a few minutes ago, does also come with a deluxe model, um, which in this seems to include uh, understeer. No, they all come with understeer. Um, an automatic gearbox and a clock and. Not much else. It has headrests. I don't think they all had headrests. Um, again, very much a basic vehicle. Um, ooh, squeeze. The, the reason why they sold so well in the countries that they sold well in is because they were cheap. They were, no, this was not fooling anyone into thinking it was a proper luxury car, but that's not what it needed to be. And I love that for it. And I love that it's in beam. And I love that it drives in such an amusing manner. That, that suspension, while being so simple, means that it is a, an absolute pleasure to chuck about. <laughs> I love it. Weaving in and out of traffic, doing big skids. Even the auto box in this one isn't, it isn't a death sentence for the fun of the vehicle. Oh no, this might be a death sentence for the vehicle. Oh, that wheel. Hmm, yeah. Not sure that this thing is going to drive straight anymore. No, I'm... Yeah, it's just driven itself into an alleyway. I guess this is where it wants to be. But apart from the generic export models that we've checked out, there is also another variation of this vehicle, the Canella. Now, from what I've read, this is actually based off the real life version of the Reaver that was imported to Finland. Um, they were quite popular there from what I've heard. And it led to stuff like this being created. It's a, uh, it's a special edition, how very privileged I'm sure the owners must have felt. Um, with side stripes and roof bars and whoa, almost a car crash. Very, very fancy. And also one of my favourite features for a vehicle, if I can stop and actually do it, a tilt slide sunroof. Although I, I assume it only tilts in beam. Maybe it's only a tilt sunroof actually. If it was put in an aftermarket, it probably is. I love it. I love this thing. If anyone from watching this is actually from Finland and knows a little bit more about these, I would love to, to hear how they are perceived in your country. Um, because even, I believe, the old Larder pack um, from many years ago that uh, was in Beam uh, mentioned these Finnish export versions. Apparently they were quite a popular vehicle to be ranked on. Oopsie daisies. Sorry, car. But while this special edition wagon is cool, and I am a fan of it, there is one more version, or one more stock version I should say, of this vehicle that we have not yet checked out. And it is quite possibly the coolest of them all. Now, if you know me, you know that I love factory special editions, homologation cars and stuff like that. And this is something that is very much along the same lines, but somehow just a step better. The Canella tur t Turbo. Y you heard me correct. Once again, I have no idea if this is a real life thing. I really pray it is. Just look at it. 
that bulge in the hood, that special front fascia. Oh, it has the sunroof and it has special wheels and a rubber plastic spoiler and a turbo. Oh, this is so 80s. I absolutely love it. Oh, you can hear it whirring away. Oh, I'm praying, praying that this is a real life vehicle. I'm praying that I get to use this during some sort of multiplayer video at some point soon. I beg. I just love this thing. I absolutely adore it. It is so completely awful. It's like it's been made from the factory with a Halfords makeover. In fact, this isn't even from the factory because this would have been stuff like this would have been done when it was imported to Finland. So this really did arrive in Finland, go to Finnish Halfords and get a turbo on it. I want to check out the engine bay because we haven't done that yet and I want to see how this turbo system is uh, set up, how how good it looks. Pop the hood. Oh, look at that. It's a it's a cold air. It's got it's got an intercooler. It's not just a you know a hot unit. <laughs> an old, ancient engine, probably based off the original Miramar unit, with a turbo strap to it. Still single overhead cam, making 122 horsepower. Possibly, probably unreliable as all hell. I mean, I love this mod. I absolutely love this mod. And it doesn't just end there. Because this mod goes one step beyond just creating the stuff that was made in real life by Vaz. Do you see what it is yet? <laughs> yep. It's a coupe. It only comes with one coupe config. Um, the law for this is that it was a it was a concept that was made and never properly produced. But with all the parts in this mod, you could 100% create, you know, a, a turbo coupe with all the body kit stuff. It's awesome! We don't even have a normal Miramar Coupe mod at this point that works properly, and yet we have this. How cool is that? I love it. I love, 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 love this thing. I don't know if it's any lighter. It might be. I, I honestly, you know, I feel like all the weight save might would probably be negated by the modifications that would have to be made to make this into a coupe certainly doesn't crash any safer but look how cool it is it's a coupe and again i'm saying this that is not all because while this looks like a perfectly ordinary version you know it has a very cool side strike but apart from that this could be mistaken for really any other version of the mirror that we have checked out when you pop the bonnet you will see that this has and it'd be shoe rotary. And I do know that they made these in real life. I do know that there were rotary larders that were produced and actually driven by people. This wasn't just a concept, you know. This wasn't a one-off. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, this was used by the KGB as a kind of hot pursuit vehicle. Because I imagine having 118 horsepower and sounding like this probably made for quite a good pursuit thing. You know, against all the other vehicles in the country at the time. And once more, I have to properly praise the developer of this mod for the detail, for the thought that has been put into this mod. I may be crashing it into everything in sight, but we have a rotary version. Now, in the interest of making this video an even somewhat reasonable length, I can't possibly check out every config that comes with this car because I mean you know there are tuner ones there are police models I honestly recommend when it is released download it check them out yourself there are some brilliant versions there are drift ones um, and remember we have a whole other car to check out in just a second but I'm going to finish looking at the mirror with this the Taz Rally version um, I believe this is based off a real life real life version I, I know that they did go rallying in these both um, aftermarket and factory models as far as I'm aware and it is whoa, okay quite possibly one of the coolest rally cars ow I have ever seen replicated in beam both with the styling and just in terms of 
how wacky it is that it exists. It's still going, by the way. This thing is properly tough. But now we're going to move on to having a look at the Baikal. So starting off with this base early model of the Baikal, you can definitely see where the uh, where the influence, where the parts from the Mir come in. Stuff like the rear lights, which I believe are completely shared. Um, the doors, they look very familiar. If they're not exactly the same, they're close. Um, from what my understanding, this is basically just based on a lifted version of the Mir frame, which means underneath it is a Miramar, you know, but with a lot more that's my bad. A lot more off-road capability. Now, I really like the styling of this thing. I think it's creative. It looks similar to the real life one, but it's not identical. I, I like the variety it has. Um, if I was to nitpick, I would say it's a shame that the five-door model isn't included as well, seeing as, you know, the, uh, the Mir has, you know, saloon, wagon, coupe even, but this doesn't get the five door is a bit of a shame, but I'm still, you know, that's a very nitpicky complaint. Um, as you can see, it has basically the same interior. It does come with an odometer. No, not odometer, a tachometer even. And it has a very, very high load floor or very high load lip even for the boot, which doesn't open. Yes, it does. I must have broken that one. Now this early one um, seems to have quite a lot of chrome about it, just like the early uh, mirrors do. Um, yeah, it's got chrome around the doors and around the well, and on the wing mirrors and around the grille and stuff like that, and those two big headlights. Um, but it does have the late mirror bumpers, which is quite interesting. I'm not saying it's it's a flaw. I, I, it's possibly just a design choice that the company had, but either way, it is something to note. And it has these really cool steel wheels. You can't see them because I've had a crash. Those, re those really cool, st those really cool steel wheels with big chunky off-road tires. You can tell that this thing was made for exploring. Now, all of them come with um, selectable, you know, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, low range, which just blew up my valve train and locking differentials as you would expect from an off-road vehicle this thing is very capable um you know obviously it is low power that is possibly its biggest limit but it is a very capable and strong vehicle and in comparison this is the late model as you can see it has less chrome uh, you know more black trim around the front and around the doors um black mirrors and a very interesting and sensible design choice of Bigger taillights, I believe, from the wagon version of the Mir, and a big boot, rather than the very high load height, or load lip height, as I should say, that the previous model had. They changed that during the production run. Very cool detail. Would not have complained, you know, if it didn't have it, but the fact that the author has thought ahead and come up with that, I think is very, very impressive. Now, while I did previously mention that it doesn't come with a five-door variant, that doesn't just mean that it's only one body style. We have here a vehicle that I very much did not believe whoa, was based off a, uh, a real-life version until I googled it. A pickup. It's got like a kind of extended cab, you know, it's still three doors, but it has uh, still has back seats. And then this very strange, longer-than-you-would-expect bed with a you know proper thing that folds down bizarre very bizarre looking um <laughs> it's very cool but this is extremely odd to look at the proportions just look completely wrong i imagine if you had something heavy right at the back of that bed it would also possibly not be the best handling with you know all that weight so far behind the rear wheels but unladen it handles quite well um about as well as you would expect and is another interesting variant added with this mod. I I know I keep singing the praises, but I, I I really don't have any complaints at all. I'm very happy with the quality of this. I mean, you know, there's a reason that I think this, this author has been having this behind Patreon for a while. It's because, you know, this has been in development for a very long time and is a very and is of very high quality. I am suitably impressed. Now, if we look here at the variants, a lot of them are very similar to the 
um, variants that come up in the mirror. You know, there's uh, original versions, there's late versions, there is uh, the diesel engine that was found in the mirror as well. Um, the pickup one, there's this towing ver version that has these very wacky towing mirrors that point out and some heavy duty springs. There's a flatbed which as you can see takes the, uh, the the pickup version that we were just looking at and adds on the flatbed box I guess you would call it from the mere flatbed that we were looking at earlier again they share a lot of parts between the two vehicles completely realistic I would not expect this thing to or I would not expect the company to do any different if you can share parts why why wouldn't you again a bit bizarre that it doesn't have the diesel engine um but you know, that's just a, a me me asking a question for the company, not necessarily for the mod and the mod developer. I haven't seen pictures of one of these in real life, but I assume again they do exist. But uh, finding histories and stuff for all of these different model variants is uh, quite the challenge. Now there are also export models uh, such as you see here but the differences between the export models of the Baikal and the Mir are a lot less. Now again I do know a little bit about the, uh, the well I was about to call this the Baikal but the real life version, the uh, the Neva. Um, I do know that it was sold as well in Canada and Australia and over here and it actually I believe from what I remember was quite popular um, despite there being a very much um, anti-Soviet um, view um, against these vehicles in pretty much every country I just listed. Um, I know that a few survived in Canada. I know somebody on Twitter who owns one that I'm very, very jealous of. Um, I would, if I again, if I was making more requests to the mod author, being more of a demanding ass than I already am, I would say it is a little not unfortunate but I feel like there would be room for some specific Canadian versions um, with American size plates and maybe a few other changes um, you know automatic gearbox you know they would have automatic gearboxes even on these I would imagine actually maybe I'm lying I'm, I'm probably gonna research this afterwards and think that I'm an idiot um, but yeah that I feel like there would be room for that with mile per hour gauges um, stuff like that but there is not much else that I can really think of to request. Now while I check out this really really cool sport model that has like a, a, a sunroof and a bull bar and these side stripes and that really really awesome um, tacky but cool. Um, I'm also going to say uh, to the mod author if they are watching my other request would have to be I know I probably I, I either say this or I think this about pretty much every mod I, I review that I know was sold in the UK. Right-hand drive variants would be very much, very much appreciated. I've fallen over. Handled that like a champ, I'll tell you what. Even somewhat safe inside, depending on how good the seatbelts are. Now there is also one more final variant um, when it comes to the models for this and that is this, the Tour, which is I guess the most modern one. Um, as you can see, alloy wheels, integrated bumpers, a special more modern steering wheel, very much still the same vehicle underneath, you know, you're not really fooling anyone. Um, but it is I guess supposed to be the model that would be sold up until this day. I know that they do still sell them but I, I didn't realise that they update well I don't think they did update them all to look like this I think you can still get the kind of classic style with the old bumpers and stuff um, but this is very very neat to see um, it looks kind of strange it doesn't really suit it but you know the point isn't for it to suit it it's to, to update the look and bring it into the modern era or other marketing jargon by vehicle manufacturers Either way, whether it's uh, particularly good looking or not, I like it. I'm glad we have it. Um, I would say, is is there not a version like this for the Mir? But I don't. I, I would say I've I've seen uh, Nevers like this in no like, pictures of them in real life with these integrated um, like flush bumpers and stuff like that. I don't think I've ever seen a a modern um, 
like a, a variant like that for the the 2105 for the Reva. Um, so I would say it's probably not particularly realistic. Though if there was a tour version of that again, it would be quite cool to see the author's spin on it, putting these kind of bumpers on it. Would not complain if that was available as an option. Just a small suggestion, but uh, my, my opinion is about as warranted as... Uh, as about, uh, I guess as anyone else's opinion really it's completely up to the author right well it's about come time for me to end because I've been waffling on for way too long and frankly the content from this mod is just way way too in depth for me to to cover everything in just one video but I thought I couldn't end without chucking all of these vehicles down a big hill as is uh, hopefully rapidly becoming tradition for this series. So I've got here a kind of custom built coupe model with the rotary engine. I thought it's quite a cool little creation. And in front I have a collection of different Taz models that are also going to be going down the cliff or the hill. And we will see if any of them can make it to the bottom of the best paved road in Russia. So you guys can flee. Oh, they're scrapping. There's some definite fighting going on, some quarrelling. Oh, won the bike out. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh. I did not have enough speed to go over that. I thought I had enough speed. I did not. What are these ones up to, the ones that did have enough? Well, this bike out pickup is making it down quite safely. The engine on that just exploded. We've got one launching into very much launching into the air. Bloody hell. Oh, and another in the pit. But we might have two that actually stand a chance of making it to the end. Oh, I've been... I've been squashed, but the tour is actually making it. Mostly, if not completely undamaged. That's impressive. It seems they did change something over the years they produced this vehicle. They made it able to survive a big hill. The, the, the estate here has landed on my head. There's no other way to describe it. I have been well and truly squashed. And everyone else is uh, various levels of flat in various compromising positions. This one's very, very far down. Well, that has been it for this video. Um, as, as I said, the mod is in the description. You are more than welcome to go check it out on the Patreon, uh, where it is at the moment. Or if you are willing to wait a little bit, it should be available on the Beam repository before too long. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you feel like doing those sort of things. Take care and bye-bye. Uh,